Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. The hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is 10 inches, and the altitude dropped onto it is 6 inches. Find the area of the triangle. Before you try to calculate the answer, you should know this problem comes from a mischievous Russian mathematician teacher who is asking the problem to his American students. The problem comes from Vladimir Arnold, who wrote, American school students had been coping successfully with this problem over a decade. But then Russian school students arrived from Moscow, and none of them was able to solve it, as had their American peers. Why? As you mull on this problem and its solution, I want to give a little more background about Vladimir Arnold. He was truly a great mathematician. He solved Hilbert's 13th problem when he was only 19 years old. He also co-founded three new branches of mathematics, topological Galois theory, symplectic topology, and KAM theory. But he was also a popularizer of mathematics. The problem that I'm presenting in this video appeared in a handbook of problems for 5 to 15 year old children. He wrote in this pamphlet, my long experience has shown that very frequently, dimwits failing at school behind solve these problems better than A-grade pupils, since, for their survival at the back of the classroom, they must permanently think more than required, while A-graders cannot catch, quote, what should be multiplied by what in these problems. He even jokingly says, I have also noticed that five-year-old kids solve similar problems better than pupils spoiled by coaching, which in their turn cope with the questions better than university students used to swatting, who anyway beat their professors. Parentheses, the worst in solving these simple problems are Nobel and Field Prize winners. I found Arnold's observation to be amusing, and upon further reflection, it parallels my own experience. On some of my most popular videos, the worst in solving these simple problems are the Nobel and Fields Prize winners. They get too caught up in the definitions and the details to understand the bigger picture of what these videos are about, and they're unable to solve these simple puzzles, while people who have less mathematical education are able to appreciate it and understand and actually think about the problems. So now back to the problem. Let's go over how American students quote unquote solve the problem. So we have a right triangle and we have a hypotenuse with a length of 10 inches. Upon the hypotenuse is an altitude that is dropped on it with a length of six inches. So what's the area of the triangle? Let me just rotate this diagram so that it matches the diagram shown in textbooks. We have a triangle and we have two dimensions. We know the area of a triangle is equal to 1 half times its base b times its height h. So we have a horizontal length of 10, which we will take as the base b, and we have this vertical height, which we'll take as 6 inches, which is the height h. We just substitute into the formula. So the area is equal to 1 half times 10 times 6. 10 times 6 is equal to 60. We divide that by 2 to get 30 inches squared. And that's the answer that American students gave. The only problem is that if you just go through this rote calculation, it's not the correct answer. There is definitely something wrong with this problem. In fact, it is an impossibly wrong triangle. Let's try to understand why. So imagine we have a base of 10 inches. Suppose we draw a perpendicular to this base that's 6 inches. Now what would happen if we complete a triangle with these three vertices? Will this angle made at the top be equal to 90 degrees? Well, it doesn't look like a right angle here, so what would happen if we move it over? It's still not 90 degrees. What would happen if we move this length over again? It's still not 90 degrees. Are we ever going to be able to get a right triangle with these dimensions? The answer is no. Let me reset the diagram and show you why. 
So we have a base of 10. Now suppose we let this leg be equal to x. So it's one portion of the hypotenuse. The remainder of the hypotenuse must have a sum with this length equal to 10. So this length must be equal to 10 minus x. So now inside this large triangle, we have two smaller triangles. So one of the triangles has legs of 6 and x. Now, if we rotate this triangle, we'll see that it is similar to the other triangle inside of this large triangle. So we have similar triangles. We have 6 over x in one triangle, and we have 10 minus x over 6 in the other. Since we have similar triangles, the legs must be in the same ratio. So we have 6 over x is equal to the quantity 10 minus x all over 6. All that remains is to solve for x. That will give us some answer of what x needs to be. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Let's cross multiply. So we have 6 times 6 is equal to x times the quantity 10 minus x. This means 36 is equal to 10x minus x squared. Adding x squared and subtracting 10x from both sides, we get x squared minus 10x plus 36 is equal to 0. We'll use the quadratic formula. Then 10 squared is equal to 100 minus 4 times 36. This all simplifies to be minus 44. So we have x is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of minus 44 all over 2. 44 is equal to 4 times 11. And this all simplifies to be x is equal to 5 plus or minus i root 11. But now, what does that mean for the original diagram? x was supposed to be a positive real number, and we have come up with a complex answer. This is physically impossible for a geometry problem. It is not possible for a triangle to have these dimensions. Now, the Russian students didn't think about it in the algebraic way, they knew it was impossible for geometric reasons. So let me quickly review something. Suppose we have a right triangle ABC. We will show that the circumcenter of a right triangle is the midpoint of its hypotenuse. So let's first construct the circumcircle that passes through these three vertices. Let's say that O is the center of the circle. It remains for us to show that OA is equal to OB. That would mean O is the midpoint of AB. And if it's the center of the circle, OA would be a radius, OB would be a radius, as would OC. So OA would need to be equal to OB, would need to be equal to OC. So how do we do that? We start with the right triangle and construct the perpendicular bisector of AC. So we have a perpendicular and it bisects AC, so these two lengths are equal. Let's label this point as D. Now, this perpendicular bisector will pass through AB, and let's label that point as O. So since DO is the perpendicular bisector of AC, every point on it will be equidistant from A and C. So if we think about this sort of triangle, any point along this line will be equidistant from A and C. We can extend this triangle, and this new point will be equidistant from A and C, but of course another point on this triangle is O, so we know that O is equidistant from A and C, so OA is equal to OC. Now from here, look at the triangle ADO. If we scale it up to the larger triangle, we have a similar triangle. So ADO is similar to ACB, and the ratio of similarity will exactly be 1 to 2, because AD over AC is equal to 1 to 2. Therefore, AO over AB will be equal to 1 to 2, which means that AO is equal to OB. So if OA is equal to OB, we have completed the proof. We just need to put it all together. We have OA is equal to OC, and OA is equal to OB, which means all three quantities are equal to each other. Therefore, O is the circumcenter of triangle ABC and the midpoint of the hypotenuse. But how does this help us solve the problem? Let's go to a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 10. We will construct the circumcircle. We know that the center of the circle is at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So we know that if this point is O, we can calculate the radius will be half the length of the hypotenuse. It will be equal to 5. 
So that will be the same length for this vertical radius. Now, any altitude of this right triangle will be a vertical distance that's parallel to this vertical radius. And we can easily see visually that any height h must be less than or equal to 5. You can't have an altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle that's larger than half the length of the hypotenuse. Therefore, a value that h is 6 is impossible. You must think about the problem before you calculate. This reminds me of a famous quote. It's perhaps a spurious quote that's attributed to the great genius Albert Einstein. I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and then five minutes actually solving it. Unfortunately, in today's testing cultures, students may only have five minutes to solve a problem which leaves them no time to define, no time to think. So it's wonderful that we have a chance on YouTube to do something that schools are not able to do, which is present problems which actually make you think and actually reveal the joy of mathematics. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.